Hey, what's good self-direct investors? I hope you're all doing great and I want to welcome you back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan. I'm the mind behind Make More Capital and today we're coming at you with a midweek update in the world of cannabis. Now, before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or you learn something, please just leave a like on it as it really helps out my channel. And then of course, if you want to learn how to take advantage of this generational investment opportunity, subscribe below so that you don't miss any future videos. Then there's plenty of content for you to go back, rewatch, and educate yourself with. I've tried to put all the news and facts in one place so that you can watch episodes over time to learn about the evolution of the industry, identify top companies that you keep seeing pop up and take advantage whenever you're ready. And we're going to start with this great news out of marijuana moment as Virginia Senate votes to start recreational cannabis sales this September through current medical dispensaries, which is a huge development as they're no longer going to be waiting until 2024. So more on this, the Virginia Senate voted to speed up the timeline for retail cannabis sales Tuesday, approving a plan that would allow existing medical dispensaries to open to the general open sales to the general public in September. And in what senators framed as a bid to give Virginia farmers a piece of what is expected to be a lucrative recreational market, the legislation also opens early sales to a handful of large industrial hemp processors. Love to see this because regardless of how long it takes, the South doesn't screw around. And when they want to make change and implement something that's going to help the economy, they take action. So we love to see this. This ensures consumers can purchase safe, regulated products legally, said Senator Adam Eben, a Democrat from Alexandria, the bill's patron, and the proposed timeline represents a 16-month head start for the businesses over the 2024 start date still contemplated for the broader industry by the Democrats that had initially passed this bill originally. But while the legislation cleared the Senate on a bipartisan 23 to 16 vote, its final passage remains far from assured at the halfway point in Virginia's legislative session. So fair enough, wanted to provide this update though, but it does seem as if this is going to be a go, so I will provide updates. But considering the fact that New Jersey is supposed to launch in the coming months, and then we have Virginia speeding this up from 2024 to September of 2022, and then we'll have New York coming online next year. And when you consider the population of New Jersey is 8 million, Virginia, I think it's also around 8 million and New York, 20 million. It's going to be a large total addressable market coming on in the next 12 to 18 months as well. And so on to this one from Phoenix News Times. I just wanted to share this because I've covered this in videos in the past, but it seems like another publisher, Phoenix News Times, is just taking the headset data about Arizona sales and running with it. As they also report, Arizona's weed entrepreneur sold 1.9 billion of cannabis last year. And while I do hope this is true, I want to remind you that this is far higher than the estimated 1.2 billion in cannabis sales at the state tracked through taxes. So keep in mind, a $700 million difference is quite a big deal, and it seems like one of these two could be wrong. But this is, I think, the third publication sharing this news from Headset as opposed to using the actual state data. And if we scroll down, we can see taxable sales for adult use sales and medical sales January 2021 to December 2021. And I do recall doing the math before January 2022 was added. And I think this was last month that I added the total amount from adult use sales and medical sales, and it equated to 1.2 billion or close to. And so that's why I stick to this. However, just a bit more information for anyone that's curious, but I would take this info with a grain of salt, uh, just based on the fact that we can compare the two. Adding the trajectory of growth for the first year of operation is very impressive, the report's author Andy Fuller said. And I'd argue for any state to surpass 1 billion in sales in their first year is very impressive. So good job, Arizona. While Nevada, for instance, just broke 1 billion in sales last year, four years after recreational cannabis was legalized in the state back in 2017. But this is just where I want to show you that it doesn't make sense to me. And I just want to show you what I see, but I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong and you have a better way of interpreting this and you can correct me, please do let me know in the comments. But let's look at September, 2021, for example, where they claim that monthly sales equated to 160 million. Okay, but if we look here for September 2021, taxable sales from the Arizona Department of Revenue, we can see 52.5 million and 62.9, which would equate to, yeah, maybe 115 million, but certainly not 160. And even if we added the excise tax to that number, which I don't think is the right way to account for taxable sales only, it's still equaled over 174 million, which is a lot more than the apparent 160 million in monthly sales that headset recorded for Arizona in September. And so just wanted to share this as an example, why it's always important not to believe every headline that you see and to dig a little bit deeper and to do your own research and just to check for yourself because that's how you're gonna get the most accurate data. And there's a lot more information in here. So you can pause to read a little bit more about their reason. Uh, headset, the market research company, looked at strictly recreational and medical consumer sales to come up with its grand total. Then again, I think it might actually be a little bit over the top. While the company says it uses a variety of point of sale data sources to come up with its figures, its sales numbers for Arizona Arizona is higher than the 1.2 billion in taxable cannabis, but not just a bit higher, $700 million higher than that of the Arizona Department of Revenue reported last month, which I just referenced, but the state agency has cautioned that its sales figures are still estimated. And as we finalize January's revenues, we may see additional
total dollars credited to taxable sales from previous months, Department of Revenue spokesperson Rebecca Wilder said in an email. And fair enough, that may be true, but there's still a massive difference between $1.2 billion and $1.9 billion, and it's always wise not to believe every headline, but to dig a bit deeper and do your own research. And if you think I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments why, because I love to be proven wrong. On to some state developments, especially from states that have already reformed their cannabis laws and seen the benefits, as Michigan announces Ann Arbor is using cannabis tax revenue to offer free criminal record expungements. So love to see them using the added benefits and tax revenue to right the past wrongs, as Ann Arbor residents who've been convicted of crimes have a chance to clear their records and city officials say can be done for free in five easy steps. The city is promoting a new expungement program to remove past felony and misdemeanor records through a partnership between Ann Arbor's 15th District Court and the Washtena Country Public Defender's Office. It's 100% free to participate, said Deputy City Attorney Arian Slane. So there's more information on that here if you want to pause to read, but great to see states, again, having reformed their laws, seeing the benefit in tax dollars, and using those tax dollars to help their citizens. Well, this is news out of Illinois, as pot money helps revitalize De Levan, which I'm assuming is a small town or city, but the pot industry is revolutionizing one central Illinois city year after year. It's a cannabis grow house that not only brings job opportunities, but indirectly redevelops the Tazewell County area. We really want this community to grow, said Eric Dekoff, general manager at Revolution Global. Dekoff runs a facility in Delavan, which is now finishing up years of renovations to expand it to more than 150,000 square feet. And he adds, we never thought about a cannabis facility coming into town. That never crossed anybody's minds, but it's been a big benefit to the community, said Dykoff. So this link will be below if you want to read more, but again, another city seeing the benefits of ending cannabis prohibition and it's the jobs the tax revenue and all the other unforeseen consequences of ending reform helping bring positive change to cities within legal states that have ended prohibition on to this one from the national law review federal cannabis reform is 2022 the year while that might not be up to us we can continue to put the pressure on the politicians in the u.s to make sure that this happens because the setup has never been better still the momentum for reform has not been lost if anything last year saw more bills introduced into congress including two new federal legalization proposals than ever before clearly indicating its import to our nation's leaders. Justice Clarence Thomas from the Supreme Court even subtly advised Congress to address legalization, noting that the federal government's current half-in, half-out regime on cannabis strained the principles of federalism. And so, as we move forward in 2022 with hope, we review the bills before Congress and their progresses to assess which of these may have some traction for passage during this upcoming year. And so we've got the Safe Banking Act of 2021, so you can pause to read if you want to learn more about that bill. The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement More Act, you can pause to read to learn more about that one. We've got the Cannabis Administrative and Opportunity Act. The draft bill Chuck Schumer has yet to even file, but he plans to file this in April. Now, this bill has no chance. We do not want it to pass, but this is his effort to try and get everything done at once, which will not pass. But the next best case is the States Reform Act introduced by Nancy Mace, and this is a far better bill for the cannabis industry overall, and it would simply deschedule cannabis, which would no longer make it illegal and allow states to make their own changes as they see fit on their own schedule. So implications for 2022, as Congress should thus focus on forging a compromise or middle ground on these reforms to increase bipartisan support and avoid competing and inconsistent bills floating around, resulting in another year of unwanted and unnecessarily de unnecessary deadlock. Indeed, the CAOA could be an example of such needed compromise, especially if the drafters seriously heed the criticisms and comments provided during the bill's review period and consider incorporating certain bipartisan elements of the state's reform act, like a more streamlined and lower rate tax structure. With that said, the status of these cannabis reform bills, particularly the CAOA and the MORE Act, face potential change should this year's midterm elections change the makeup of who controls the Senate, House, or both. And so regardless, until Congress can iron out the kinks, iron out the kinks on comprehensive cannabis reform, the Safe Banking Act of 2021 remains a practical law to pass in the interim. So you can pause to read more if you want, but this again just adds to why the Safe is so important, because not only is it good policy to get $25 billion in cash off the street, but also lower the cost of capital for minority entrepreneurs and small business owners, it will make America safer. And if they actually care about safety, they would want to get 25 billion in cash off the street. As thank you, Todd Harrison, for sharing this latest story. Man shot six times during a shoreline pot shop robbery. Adding, I got shot in the leg, through the arm, broke one of my bones, got shot through the abdomen, chopped up my liver, and another through the top of the leg. But thank God this person survived to share their side of the story. But is it going to force Chuck Schumer to act anytime soon? Not likely, as he keeps repeating the same old crap. So thanks, Tom Engel, for reporting this. What well, looks like progress, but it's not. It's just the same old as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer just sent a letter to constituents saying he is committed to making federal cannabis reform a priority, which would be some form of safe plus expungement of 
records and clemency for those in jail. However, he keeps adding the fluff and is working to finalize this legislation and to pass the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act in the near future, which we know what which, which we know will not happen because it does not have the votes. So you can pause to read the fluff if you want. But again, I just remind you, this is why it's time to put on the pressure, reach out to Senator Schumer, Senator Pelosi, and ask them to support safe banking in the Competes Act if you can. Well, this one also comes from Tom Angle. Just wanted to share it because it's Ed Perlmutter talking sense saying that federally legalizing cannabis would help people get their mail delivered on time. And that's a fact. As suggesting at a recent rules committee hearing, pointing out how U.S. Postal Service staffing shortages are driven in part by the ban on workers using cannabis. And this is exactly why Amazon lifted their ban on workers using cannabis in their evening because it doesn't affect them, you know, during their job time. And this is exactly the same reason why if the U.S. just descheduled cannabis, there would be so many benefits to society as a whole. As for example, U.S. Postal Services would be able to hire a lot more workers who might consume cannabis in their evening, but that would not stop you from getting your mail on time. And then lastly, I wanted to share this one from Sammy J. As Viridian continues putting out great contrarian notes and graphs on their thesis, as smaller companies should benefit more from banking reform than their larger cousins. And this is in reference to, let's say, tier two, tier three, and tier four MSOs, obviously benefiting if SAFE were to pass. Obviously, if it doesn't pass, they're not going to benefit. Plus, the widening spread is bullish for further consolidation and M&A activity, as tier ones can then further buy these companies at lower prices if SAFE does not pass. And so you can re read a bit more of their notes here. Uh, you can pause to read. But then they've also added this visual, uh, Viridian on U.S. Cannabis. So thank you, Todd Harrison, for sharing this one. We're looking at companies with market caps at greater than $750 million, which is represented by the green line over time, and companies with market caps less than $300 million, represented by the orange line over time. And the valuation gap is the black line in between, uh, which is apparently the difference. And so obviously, the longer any sort of reform takes, which includes SAFE, the more risk for these companies. But if we were to get some sort of reform, obviously, the the companies trading with lower valuations will likely see the more upside. And so that is why this is relevant. Um, but so you can grab these links below if you wanted to read more about those. And so on to this one from thestreetinsider.com. So just wanted to share this article. Uh, if you're interested in three of the companies listed, Green Thumb Industries, True Leaf, and Cure Leaf. And so this article is Cannabis Stocks Recap, three to watch right now in 2022. So I'm not going to go through it all. However, if you want to learn about Green Thumb Industries, you can pause to read a bit more information. True Leaf Cannabis Corp, if you want to learn more about them, you can pause to read. And Cure Leaf, if you want to learn more, you can pause to read that one. Well, some news that a True Leaf, True Leaf acquires a 64,000 square foot cultivation facility in Phoenix to add to their sales in Arizona. Yesterday, they announced it has completed the acquisition of an operational 64,000 square foot cultivation facility in Phoenix, Arizona. And True Leaf will pay just 13.75 million cash at closing with potential milestone payments subject to earnout and escrow requirements. So it seems like a very small amount of money in order to gain the ability to grow a lot more cannabis in Arizona, which is a very fast growing market as we saw in the beginning. So this new cultivation facility immediately improves supply chain capacity and becomes True Leaf's fifth cultivation facility in Arizona, supporting True Leaf's 17 dispensaries in the state of Arizona with flour for medical patients and adult use customers. Um, and all these locations are listed if you want to check those out. And so some, on to some other news from MJ Biz Daily. As a study found, banking action rows in first adult use cannabis states after legalization. Go figure. If you legalize cannabis, you're going to have more banks take on the risk because you're going to make money that way. So banking activity increased measurably in the first four states that legalized adult use cannabis, according to a new white paper. The study recently released by four university researchers concluded there is a statistically and economically significant jump in both bank deposits and bank lending in Alaska, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington after those four states became the first to legalize adult use. Adding our results indicate that banking activity, which includes deposits and subsequent loans increased considerably in legalizing states relative to non-legalizing states, the researchers wrote. And this seems fairly obvious because if a state does not acknowledge an industry, it's going to maintain all of the transactions it's already had. But if a state legalizes and acknowledges a new industry, there's obviously going to be added transactions from dealing with that new industry. So while this seems very obvious, nonetheless, it's good that we've got more data to prove that the double standard goes down in states that do legalize cannabis. And this is another interesting development as a pioneering cannabis banking company, Safe Harbor, to trade on NASDAQ via a $185 million deal. And so a cannabis financial institution led by an industry pioneer, Sunday Seafried, is on its way to going public on the NASDAQ through a $185 million merger that will give the company more money to lend to cannabis businesses. And this is a prime example of innovation when a problem like safe banking does not get solved. And so obviously this industry has needed safe banking for a while since it hasn't happened. Someone has come up with an innovative way to list a new funding company that can actually bank with cannabis businesses. Seafried's Safe Harbor Financial announced a definitive agreement Monday to be taken public by Northlight's acquisition, a blank check business also known as a special purpose acquisition company. 
So our goal is to become a one-stop shop for cannabis business financial needs, she added. So this is a really interesting concept. Now, I'm not saying you should go invest in this because I have not done the background research and looked into all this. It's just one way that the industry is innovating to work around the problems that are not being solved by the lawmakers that are there, whose job it is to solve their problems. But some more detail, under the merger, New York-based Northern Lights, an affiliate of Luminous Capital, will pay $70 million in cash and $150 million in common stock to acquire Safe Harbor, a subsidiary of Colorado-based partner Colorado Credit Union. And so if this is a subsidiary of Colorado-based, obviously uh, these are functioning in states where cannabis is legal and where they're already doing transactions, while the estimated post-transaction equity value of the company will be $327 million according to the release. So that would obviously justify an increase in market value, um, but nonetheless, this is not advice, just sharing some new and interesting information. So onto this from the from Marijuana Moment, as GOP Missouri lawmaker unveils wide-ranging cannabis legalization bill as others pursue the 2022 ballot. So this is great news, as a Republican Missouri lawmaker on Tuesday unveiled a bill to tax and regulate adult use cannabis in the state. It would provide opportunities for expungements, authorize social consumption facilities, and permit cannabis businesses to claim tax, des tax deductions with the state. So this is another interesting workaround that, you know, while SAFE is not being passed, will help the cannabis businesses in their state. So good job, Rep. Ron Hicks filed the o uh, omnibus legislation titled the Cannabis Freedom Act. He said in a memo to colleagues that the measure was drafted in a way that thoughtfully incorporates elements from every cannabis bill filed the session to create a free and tightly regulated market for legal cannabis. So good job, Missouri. Just a bit more information. Uh, here's what the cannabis legislation would accomplish as drafted. Possession, home cultivation, and licensing, uh, social equity and consumer protections, taxing, taxation, banking, social use. And so you can pause to read. Otherwise, the whole link will be below if you want to grab onto that. While some news out of Maryland is apparently Maryland lawmakers get first look at plan for full cannabis legalization. So while this is good news, um, what kind of progress are they making? The Democratic proposal has two parts. One bill that would put the broad question of legalization on the ballot in November, which is in line with what we've been hearing about Maryland, while a second bill is spelling out details of what would happen if referendum passes. So while that sounds like progress, and it certainly is, a lot of the details listed here is how they are going to decriminalize it and let people out of jail, but there is really no word of launching an adult use program and actually legalizing an adult use program that would provide jobs tax revenue, um, and a lot of other benefits to the citizens of Maryland. So hopefully that will come in the future as there's a lot of time for that. But main thing that they highlight is the act, the effort of decriminalization, which will no longer obviously decriminalize people for consuming cannabis in the state. So that is progress. Good job, Maryland. Well, unfortunately, this news comes out of Ohio. It's not all unfortunate, but just highlighting that they're still prohibitionists, sadly, um, in power in states as Ohio cannabis legalization will have to go on ballot if it's going to pass, Ohio Senate President says. Okay, fair enough. That's what we're already going to do. As on Wednesday, Senate President Matt Huffman just said no to recreational cannabis. Last month, state officials determined organizers gathered enough signatures, about 133,000, to compel the legislature to consider a recreational cannabis bill they proposed. If lawmakers don't pass it in the next roughly 3.5 months, organizers with the coalition to regulate cannabis like alcohol can gather the same number of signatures, so another 133,000, again, to place the issue on the general election ballot. And so speaking to reporters Wednesday, Huffman, a Lima Republican and one of the most powerful figures in state politi politics, emphasized that no road to recreational cannabis will run through him. So basically, he said, since you collected the signatures which would compel us to consider a bill, I'm not going to do that. I don't want anybody to misunderstand my position, Huffman said, per the Columbus Dispatch. I'm not going to break it, bring it to the Senate floor, and if that means people want to go put it on the ballot, have it at that. So he's basically told everyone from Ohio, hey, collect another 133,000 signatures, put it on the ballot, and once you guys vote an overwhelming yes, then I guess I'll have to consider my position if I want to get reelected. So on to some other stories. This is a, uh, a study out of the National Library of Medicine looking at sleep and insomnia treatment, a new multitasking natural compound based on melatonin and cannabis extracts. And so just to look at the conclusion, the data suggested that the formula CBD melatonin could be a competitive could be competitive with the classic hypnotic synthetic drugs. The antioxidant activity of melatonin offers a further benefit to the brain network, restoring the biological clock functions, while CBD reducing chronic pain perception helps to complete the neuromuscular relaxation and to relieve anxiety, fulfilling a very balanced sensation of well-being during the sleep. Which adds more evidence to the fact that cannabis can help with those who have difficulty sleeping. And while in the past, we've really only had synthetic sleep medicines available, something natural can also go a long way. And as a consumer of high 
THC cannabis before I go to bed. It helps me fall asleep like that. And I wake up at 5 a.m. ready to start the next day. And all I can say is it works for me. And so globally, onto some other news out of high times, the South African government to fast track cannabis reform regulations. So we love to see this or hear this as South Africa says the government will speed up regulatory reform to help the cannabis industry thrive as part of a broader campaign, as they should. As President Cyril Ramaphosa said in his State of the Nation address on Thursday, February 10th, that the cannabis industry is on track to create 130,000 jobs domestically. And as a result, creating a regulatory and policy framework for the functioning of the industry itself is now a priority. Good. We want to harness this, he said, and we are going to fast track policy and regulations for the use of cannabis for medical use, especially in the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal. And the new focus on reform is an interesting turn of events here that many have predicted would pick up speed as the world emerges from COVID. As Cannabis for Private Purposes bill has been making its way through Parliament since its introduction in September 2020, but it has been repeatedly stalled until now, that is. So I hope they will move forward on this so I can provide an update out of South Africa sooner than later, but that's great news. While out of Israel, they announced new cannabis decriminalization plans. So Israel, the startup nation, published new guidelines last week to eliminate criminal penalties for consumption. So good to see progress out of more countries. As Israeli Justice Minister Gideon Sarr proposed new guidelines last week, which further moved the consumption of cannabis away from a criminal offense and proposed a essentially creating an administrative one punishable with a maximum fine of a thousand shekels, about $310. So the new guidelines are still temporary, but are set to replace the measure in place since 2019, which expires next month in March. And so while this is far from the full and final victory that many Israelis have been hoping for, if not lobbying for, without this extension, the use of cannabis would have reverted to a fully criminal offense. So it's good that they've taken a step in the right direction to decriminalize. And while full legalization was proposed two years ago and on the plate, sadly, a government change did delay that and sadly it has not been made a priority since and so while this is a step in the right direction hopefully Israeli's government will consider full legalization again because the citizens want it and obviously it's good policy and would bring a lot of benefits lastly just wanted to share this one for marijuana moment as this is an ad that did get approved because it did not directly use the word cannabis as cannabis icon Willie Nelson pushes for the legalization of comfort in Super Bowl ad for shoes and so this is a great commercial because it's it's again highlighting how you can get approved as long as you don't directly use the word cannabis and it's just it's unfortunate it's insane that it that the other one that I showed from Weed Maps did not get approved and that this one would. Nonetheless, if that's what you got to do to uh, to get the point across, at least they did get the point across. Hi, I'm Willie Nelson. I fought for the legalization of the one thing that can bring comfort to millions, Skechers. You see, the Skechers should have gotten illegal. Uh, have so many <laughs> I don't think Skechers are illegal anywhere. But to feel so good, I just assume the man made them illegal. No. Not even a little illegal, like you can wear them to a concert, but not to a kid's soccer game. You can wear Skechers anywhere. Well, pass the Skechers. Skechers. Legalized comfort. Brilliant ad, Willie, because that is not about Skechers. And that is it for today's episode, folks. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I really hope you got some value out of it. What did you think of the stories mentioned? Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'd be happy to address them. But besides that, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please just leave a like on it. Subscribe below if you don't want to miss any future videos, and I will catch you on Sunday for this week in cannabis investing news. Have a great week, everybody.